Hey everyone and welcome to Ricky's Rock and Reviews. Today I have the pleasure of talking to you guys about The Aching Plane by Cody Lackin. This is, I believe, his second major novel. His first being The Family Condition, which was received very well. Um, although I haven't read that, I definitely want to read it now after reading this one because this is such a heavy novel about grief, sorrow, and just missing somebody to the point of it being horrific. And what I really appreciated about the story is, you know, this is running about almost 400 pages long. And so the characters really get to breathe. The scenarios really get to breathe, um, even though the characters themselves feel like they can't. Especially our main character. Her name is Charlie. And when she was 12, she was living her best life. You know, she had a best friend and a group of friends that would... Uh, kind of traverse the the streets in her neighborhood and especially this area in a creek called Catalpa and on one fateful day when they're both 12 years old uh, Charlie's best friend Marion goes missing and she is missing for over 10 years the story picks up 10 years after Marion goes missing and Charlie has never been the same and it's really hard for her to connect with people, and I'm sure that everyone can relate to that feeling of grief, um, especially with one so so intense as losing a best friend. And the only companion that she really has is her father. And they have this really interesting relationship um, where they help lean on each other. Um, her mother walked out on them, and so her father is also kind of dealing with something of his own. They go to church every Sunday and they try to use these moments of self-reflection as a way of healing, but it only helps them to a certain point. Part of what has caused Charlie to change so much in the time of Marion's disappearance is that she has started to see these really strange figures and shadows that almost seem to call to her and wave to her at the most uh, random of moments. Um, she could be at church or she could be driving down the road with her father or you know moments before she meets a a potential love interest uh, she's seeing these really creepy figures she's seeing disfigured people things that are really unnatural you know tentacles coming out of people's mouths and it's just really really eerie and creepy um, but she kind of describes them as getting progressively worse. And Charlie definitely gets a jolt um, once Marion returns in a mysterious fashion. And when Charlie learns of the circumstances in which Marion returns, all hell breaks loose, almost literally, because what should have been a moment of, of great happiness and, and, and just a glorious return is anything but that. It seems like the agony and grief of the memory of what Marion and Charlie had 10 years ago, that memory is so painful that it almost becomes tangible in our real world. It becomes agony incarnate. And Charlie starts learning more about what Marion went through. And it goes just fascinatingly deep. Um, it turns out that there is like this dark, almost underworld or parallel world, however you want to see it. There's this just cosmic other place where it seems that all of our pain stems from. And Cody kind of describes it uh, as an ache. There is these like shadow people that feed off of our happiness. Um, and there's just this great mythology. The mystery of this place is slowly revealed and it's done in such a really inventive fashion we learn about these characters in the past that have tried to reach this dark Catulpa place and their past actions are having current consequences in charlie and marion's story um, it feels like everything is interwoven and i just love learning more about this place and about the people that try to first navigate it almost like the first um, explorers like Lewis and Clark. Think about it in that way but in just a horrific fashion. Now kind of like what I was hinting at before this book is a slow burn. 
Um, it's very methodical and I really appreciated that because I felt like we got a lot of time with each character in their head, especially Charlie and Mary and, and some other, um, like the first pioneers of this Dark Atulpa. And in fact, there's even a journal and I really loved the journal of one of the first explorers. Uh, it takes a great chunk of the book and it was just really fascinating to see the the lengths that people would go to try to remember somebody and the pain that comes with that and you know going so deep as to almost like collapsing on yourself in this void of just sorrow and agony and this ache that is described now following Cody on social media, I, I can see that he's very well versed in literature and it comes across in his writing. It feels very confident and there's a lot of moments where he's making astute observations. And one of the things that I really took away from this was his uh, description of faith. And although it's in a horrific scene um, and although it seems like there are moments where it feels like God has abandoned his people. And I feel like his description has strengthened my definition of faith. And I'll let you as a reader discover that yourselves. There are many moments in here where Cody is describing like this shadow version of ourselves. And I've seen that come up a lot in, um, you know, things I've been researching on my own. Uh, reading Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power and the Laws of Human Nature, as well as um, other theologians and um, like St. Augustine and you know stuff in the Bible describing these like dark halves and how they come into play and I really liked how he took these ideas and used them to kind of prop up his story and I thought he was able to make the most of the ideas that he presented and of course this dark place this shadow world called Dark Atulpa is definitely a metaphor for how we as people deal with grief um, and losing somebody and that can be really really personal and so this book is littered with moments where um, anybody can relate to what these characters are going through uh, it can be a horrific experience and so um, as we are navigating this world and as we are looking at the world through Charlie's eyes and from different characters' point of view as well um, at different points in the past, present, and maybe a little bit in the future. Um, we see how everyone is at a different point in their grief and at a different level. I thought it was very clever how Cody used these variations in degrees of grief as a way for the characters to relate to each other but also haunt each other. Um, you just have to see what I mean when you read the book. And now I want to read to you all an excerpt um, from the point of view of a pastor who plays a pivotal role in the novel. And he's describing his life up to this point and how grief has um, affected him. And I thought this was also a, a really good example of the beautiful writing that Cody has all throughout the book. The pastor fumbled through uneven breaths tears on his cheeks. I dream of the streets of foreign cities, the cobblestones of Paris, the small hotel rooms of London, of York. I dream of the beautiful ruins of Rome made mundane, almost pedestrian in broad daylight, and streets with the music of amateur performers under street lamps where I once walked with her. Her name was Daria. All my life I wanted only to be closer to God to give my life to him entirely, as if that might fill whatever hole I was born with. But all those years, the studies, the programs, the missions, all I ever felt of that intimacy I sought was silence, waiting for a reply that would never come. And then I met her, and it all clicked into place. It made sense to me how someone could lay out their whole life in the service of another, or in surrender, or devotion, with or without reply. It made sense, and as it turned out, I was her answer too. That, I mean her, and that life, that time in my life, is all I ever wanted in this world. 
In my dreams, that's where I am. That's the life I'm living. In my dreams, she is still alive. And it's so much more real to me than, than any of this. And yeah, there's some like really hard, heavy, heavy scenes in here. And what I can congratulate Cody on is that he absolutely nailed the ending. I just have to applaud the epilogue. It's probably the best that I've ever read. Um, and that is no hyperbole. I, I was just super, super satisfied with the ending and it just felt so right. So if you guys would like a methodical, self-reflective kind of read, um, with just beautiful prose, I would definitely recommend The Aching Plane by Cody Lacken. And um, I'll catch you guys on the next one.